One sure way to keep more of your hard-earned wealth is by paying less tax. But one of the biggest pension mistakes or retirement mistakes I see people make is prioritizing tax saving over growth potential. So how do you get the balance right? In this video, I'm going to tackle this subject head on to help you understand these considerations when you're planning your pensions and investments to provide a great lifestyle in retirement. After all, enjoying our downtime to the max is surely what life is all about. So investing this next 10 minutes or so of your time is going to help you avoid some pitfalls that could potentially make or save you thousands of pounds over your lifetime. I'll be covering the following things off in this video, all of which are in the timestamps in the description below, so you can easily rewatch and navigate to the most relevant sections to yourself. Why investing purely to avoid future tax can be a big mistake. Why stopping pension contributions for fear of future tax is usually a bad idea. And why ignoring pensions solely in favour of ISAs can harm your retirement planning. If you're here for the first time, my name's Chris Bourne and I've been a financial planner in the UK now for 17 years. I have one simple mission and that is to help as many people as possible achieve tax efficient financial independence. That's what all of my videos are about, so be sure to subscribe and turn on your notifications if that sounds helpful. And without any further ado, let's get into it. One of the biggest mistakes I've seen people make is trying to avoid the lifetime allowance charge on their pension by inhibiting the amount of growth they can achieve on their pension investments. For those who don't know, the lifetime allowance is the total tax efficient amount of money you're able to hold in pensions in your lifetime. And if you exceed the threshold, which is currently set to £1,073,100, you're liable to pay an additional tax charge on the excess when you crystallize, i.e when you take your benefits. I did a video about some of the misconceptions around the lifetime allowance a while back, which you can find in the description below to watch after this video. But one of the main things that's misunderstood is how much tax you actually pay. People assume that they'll pay 55% because that's the headline rate that they've heard. But in most cases, they'll pay 25%. You only pay 55% if you take all of the excess out as a cash withdrawal. If the funds are simply transferred into a drawdown plan, the excess charge is 25%. You will pay income tax on anything you then take out of drawdown, but you're not obliged to take anything. And it may make sense from an inheritance tax perspective to leave as much of the money where it is for as long as possible, because inheritance tax isn't due on pension holdings. Limiting the amount of growth you can achieve just to avoid paying more tax is pointless. Let's say you're already £100,000 over the lifetime allowance and you think, I don't want to make this tax charge any worse, so I'm going to invest my money in a way where I only get 1% growth a year. Over 10 years, that 100k will have grown to £110,462. If you crystallised your whole pension pot and transferred that excess into drawdown, the tax would be £27,615, leaving you with a net excess of £82,846. Let's say though that you just left your funds to keep on growing and didn't think about the tax charge, and you achieved 5% a year growth. Over the same period, that 100k excess would have grown to £162,889. The LTA charge on that would be 40,722, which is obviously a bigger tax bill, but your net excess is 122,166 pounds. That's almost a 40,000 pound improvement. Always try to get the best performance that you can within your risk profile. Don't cut your nose off to spite your face by avoiding growth. I would always recommend the tax-free like button though. Tapping that will cost you absolutely nothing at all, and it will also help you by ensuring YouTube delivers other videos you may like too, so don't forget to do that. Sometimes it can be sensible to look at other investment vehicles instead of pensions when you know your contributions are going to take you above the lifetime allowance. But even that is often not the case. The biggest example is when your income exceeds £100,000 a year. You may know that at this level, you start to lose your personal allowance and you lose one pound of it for every two pounds that your income exceeds 100k. As the personal allowance is currently £12,570 
That means you'll totally lose it when your income exceeds £125,140. So that means that you start paying a higher tax rate at a lower earnings level you're actually suffering an effective tax rate of 60% on earnings between 100,000 and 125,140. One way of mitigating that is by making pension contributions. Let's say you earn 140,000 pounds a year, making a pension contribution of 40,000 pounds brings your effective earnings for tax purposes down to 100,000 pounds again. That means that you've not only bought back your personal allowance and avoided that 60% tax trap, you've been awarded 40% tax relief on the contribution. Some people don't do this though because they're worried their pension will exceed the lifetime allowance in future. And that means they're accepting a 60% effective tax rate now to avoid a 25% tax charge that they might have to pay in the future. That makes no sense. It makes even less sense when you consider that these people are often in their late 40s or early 50s, sometimes younger. And the LTA charge doesn't even have to be paid until age 75, assuming you live that long and haven't decided to crystallise your whole pension pot before then. We've got no idea what the lifetime allowance is even going to be 25 years in the future, or even whether it will still exist. Once again, don't cut your nose off to spite your face. If you're planning ahead for your future, it's really possible to build a great retirement fund using pensions, even if you think you've left it a little bit late. Check out my investing for over 40s video after you've watched this one. It'll be on the end screen and in the description below. Another big pension mistake that I see people make, often under the influence of those who sadly don't know what they're talking about, is stopping pension contributions prematurely in order to solely fund ISAs. The reason they do this is simple. They realise that all gains can be taken out of ISAs tax-free, whereas pension withdrawals are subject to income tax. What they fail to appreciate though is the power of compound interest on the tax relief awarded on top of their pension contributions. This is money physically added to pension contributions for you by HMRC. To give an example, let's first say that you pay £500 per month into an ISA at a 7% return over 20 years, with the contribution increasing by 2% a year to allow for inflation. The projected total at the end of those 20 years would be £302,498. You then decide that you want to take 20k a year out, which is 1,666 a month, again increasing at 2% inflation. We'll assume you move into a more cautious investment strategy at that stage, so your average return drops to 4% a year. Your money would run out between years 18 and 19. To contrast that with a pension, £500 per month would be immediately grossed up to £625 if you were contributing on the tax relief at source method, if you were paying into a SIP for example. Using all of the same assumptions, that would grow to £378,131. Now the first important thing to remember about drawing money from a pension is, if you're withdrawing using the uncrystallised funds lump sum method, which I'll explain a little more in my next video, so make sure you're subscribed, you can take the first 25% of every withdrawal as tax-free lump sum. The remainder of the payment is taxable as income but you do get your personal allowance to offset against this, which is currently £12,570. Let's assume for the purposes of this example that your full personal allowance is available to you. We withdraw £15,500 of taxable pension income for the year. That means that we can take £5,166 of tax-free lump sum, because 15500 divided by 0.75 is 20,666. So 15,500 pounds is 75% of the total and 5,166 is 25% of the total. The tax on your 15,500 pounds at today's basic rate of 20% would be 586 pounds. That leaves 14,914 pounds net. Add back in the 5,166 pounds tax-free lump sum and we have £20,080. Divide that by 12 and we arrive at £1,673 a month, around about the same total as we were taking from the ISA. Our total withdrawal from the pension therefore, to arrive at the same net withdrawal as the ISA, would be approximately £20,600 a year, 
or £1,716 a month. So if we took that amount from the pension value of 378,131, making all of the same assumptions as we did with the ISA, the pot isn't projected to run out until between the 23rd and 24th year. That's a five year improvement on the ISA. Now it has to be said that your full personal allowance isn't likely to be available forever, because at some point, your state pension, assuming you get a full one, will use up most of it. Even if we assume though that you have no personal allowance at all, without going through all of the calculations again, I can tell you that at current rates, you'd need to be drawing around £1,960 a month from a pension to get the same net result as the ISA. The projection then would be for your money to run out between years 19 and 20. Still an improvement on the ISA, albeit much closer. The final point on this though is that those calculations assume you're only receiving tax relief at the basic rate while your contributions are going in. If you pay tax at the higher or additional rates, you'd be able to claim more tax relief via your self-assessment. Let's say you were a 40% taxpayer for that whole 20 year contribution period, you'd be granted an extra 125 pounds a month, which would effectively be added back on top of your salary. If you decided to invest that further tax relief into your pension, the pot is projected to be worth 453,756 pounds a significant increase on what the same net contribution into an ISA would have achieved, meaning withdrawals would be possible for much longer. Everyone's circumstances are different though, and ISAs will still play an important role in people's financial planning, particularly those people who want to enjoy a very early retirement because pensions won't allow that. This is where speaking to a good financial planner could be very helpful because as you can see there are lots of considerations and it's your retirement and your future lifestyle that's at stake. There are some sensible tax planning steps that you should take and I'll be covering those in my next video so make sure you're subscribed with your notification bell turned on to not miss that.